Recently, I've been making very big changes to my workshop practices. I've moved from a large workshop that was basically full of traditional tools to a more compact workshop in my own home with very few tools, mostly centered around things like this X-Tool laser cutter and 3D printers. And that's because, well, there have been some big changes in my life and I'm adapting to them. But what people are saying is, well, Robert's a shame because you've become a channel about 3D printing and laser cutters. And to be honest, nothing could be further from the truth. The channel is still about creativity, exploring ideas, building things yourself. And these things, well, they're just tools to do that. That's my interest in these machines, is that they are tools in order to explore inventiveness. And that, I think, is really, really important. Think about your history. Manufacture has always gone to basically where it's cheapest. And of course, that's no surprise. Nobody wants to pay a fortune. We want the stuff at the cheapest price possible. And so manufacture follows that. In days of yore, when things like transportation were absolutely rubbish, then you found manufacturing growing up in places where there are the resources. And that's why you find things like old oh, brick kilns and potteries on where there are great big beds of clay. Because who wants to lug enormous lumps of clay through a forest? Of course, things move on. And as transportation developed, became cheaper, other issues began to pull in. And that main one was probably power. Power and power distribution was very expensive. And of course, equally, that's why you found manufacturing growing up where there were cheap power sources. And you get mills and things like valleys where you can attach a water wheel and you can use the water power to run your machinery and cut that cost. And things like furnaces and iron industries grew up where there were great big seams of coal and you could have power and low transportation. In our day and age, of course, power distribution is, well, everywhere. It's no longer the real issue that it was. But one of the biggest components in manufacturing these days is the cost of labour. That's why manufacturing moves to where that labour cost is the lowest. And of course, we can bemoan this but nobody wants to pay an absolute fortune for goods and services. And so we move to areas where those are going to be cheaper. And that's happening even now. The industry moves to where the cost is going to be the lowest. The question is, of course, what do we do about that? Well, we can look at our strengths and developing trends and then ask do our strengths match those trends and focus our efforts there rather than complaining and moaning and going boo-hoo, I wish we were all whittling knives and forks out of deer antlers. We can actually look at what it is that we're doing and develop what it is that we're doing into where the trends are using the strengths we've already got. So what are our strengths? Well, to my mind, they're pretty obvious, really. We have a well-educated workforce. We have a well-developed infrastructure of roads, telecommunications, and power. And we can put those two together really, really easily because, of course, working from home is not really a challenge anymore, so we don't really need to go anywhere to do it. All we really need to do is change elements of our mindset. What then are the developing trends that could be thought about. Well, it's a surprising thing, but a report came out in 2014 showing that 13% of industry back then was reliant on 3D printing for its production. And of course, that's continued to grow. Actually, it shut up. In areas where personalization is particularly important, 3D printing has come to dominate. Within 500 days, the US hearing aid industry completely transformed itself to being reliant on 3D printing. And those manufacturers who tried to stay with traditional methods, in fact, went out of business. And you might expect that, it's a personalized product. But GE have just got permission to produce their jet engine by 3D printing, and they're expecting to produce something like 45,000 units. So you would expect traditional manufacture to be cheaper. It turns out it's not. 
And if you 3D print a jet engine, you can reduce the cost by a colossal 75%. Now that centres around things like reduction in waste and lack of assembly during the manufacture, but an even more important issue is the backup machinery behind it, which we don't often think about. In order to produce an injection moulded part, you need machines that are exceedingly expensive and the moulds can be hundreds of thousands of dollars. With 3D printing, you don't need to have to set all of that up. And of course, it's very adaptable. So if you want to change something, you can change it in a matter of days rather than having to wait for years so that the money you've spent on those big machines is actually paid back. And that is one of the key things as well because it gives industry flexibility. If there's a market demand, they can meet that market demand almost instantly, and that pushes them much further ahead of the competition. 3D printing is the way industry is going. So to my mind, we have a clear trend, and we have a unique set of skills that can be directed at that clear trend. Now, when I was young, I used to help my dad fix the car, and I'm sure I shared that experience with lots and lots of people. But it's part of what gave me my love for engines, machinery, engineering, was that experience of a child. And those experiences really dominate what you think and how you look at the world and what you enjoy doing. It's one of the reasons I think that a 3D printer in the home is really, really important. I recently gave a 3D printer to a neighbour of mine because I had a spare 3D printer, so I just gave it to him. And he has his grandkids around all of the time now playing with this 3D printer. One of the things that people say is 3D printers are expensive. Well, yes, they are in a sense, but not as expensive as traditional tools. I mean, you can buy a cheap lathe for about 500 pounds. They're not very good, but they'll do the job. A good lathe is gonna cost you tens of thousands of pounds and need a workshop to sit it in. You can buy a cheap 3D printer for about 100 pounds you can buy a good 3D printer for about a thousand pounds and it can sit in your home. And the same is true of laser cutters. You can buy a cheap laser cutter for a hundred dollars or so, or an expensive laser cutter for about four thousand or so, and they can sit in a very small space, creating a workshop that you can do things in and share with your children and grandchildren and build that sense of love in making stuff, creating things, inventing things, and exploring your own ideas and thoughts. And these are the reasons I think 3D printing is in fact extremely important to us. It's important to us because it unleashes our own individual creativity. It's at the core of what needs to happen in an industry where we don't get left behind and where we don't sit there bemoaning our fate. Yeah. So I would say, for us, what was a hobby, 3D printing, is becoming an industry. And what was industry will become a hobby. Of course, we don't like change, but it might be a good idea to embrace that change and build it into work practices at home. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.